It's just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Dimitri Edelchek and Alex Nudell. I'll start with Dimitri. He's on the left. He's the one that has hair on his head. He's not the beautiful, bald one. <laughs> Dimitri Edelchek is the director of partner marketing for Revenue Well and is the past director of marketing for Plan Mecca. Revenue Well helps dentists and practices create closer, more connected relationships with their patients and their communities. Dimitri is a marketing executive with 12 years of dental industry experience with focus on dental technology like hardware and software and has worked directly with dental practices and dealer channels to help drive technology solutions to advance patient care. He is a profit-focused business development leader with over 20 years of experience with a proven ability to grow market share, penetrate adjacent markets, and drive new product development within startup and established industrial, medical, and dental markets. He is highly skilled at developing sales channels and key accounts, uses a diagnostic approach to problem solving that assesses clients with interdepartmental needs succinctly and inspires teams to produce solutions collaboratively. His specialties are everything you're doing in your dental office. The bold beauty to the right is Alex Nudell, founder of Revenue Well. How cool is that? Has more than 20 years of experience as a recognized dental industry speaker, practice growth specialist, successful practice owner, and digital entrepreneur. As a dental practice owner, he realized the need for an easy way to handle the routine communications associated with attracting new patients, increasing production, and creating a wow experience for his patients. He founded Revenue Well to meet those needs, freeing the doctor and staff to focus on what they do best, serving the patient. Revenue Well helps dentists practices create closer, more connected relationships with their patients and their communities. Founded in 2010, Revenue Will is a fast-growing software company that has a single goal, help dental practices succeed. Their practice marketing suites automates common patient communication processes from recall and reactivation efforts to social media posts and post-operative instructions. It also gives dentists the tools to attract, retain, and maximize the lifetime value of a patient. So Alex, um, you owned a dental office. Now, are you a dentist or are you live in a state that um, that's legal or tell us about that? Well, my ex-wife is a dentist. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't my mean to laugh. My current wife is a dentist. Oh my god, you, you've uh, you've fallen for it twice, huh? I sucked in both times, yes. And uh, I have a 20 year old daughter who's super excited to take her DAT on June 27th. Nice, congratulations! So you were married. Thank you very much. So you were married to a dentist in Florida. Yeah, so I'm married to a dentist in Florida now as well. There are two Dr. Nudels. So, so tell us about your journey. You're married to a dentist who own their own practice? Yes. So ultimately, my journey became in, started in about 1995 when she was working for a very popular dentist in New York, in Brooklyn, New York, and helped with the marketing. I come from an automobile business uh, where I did quite a bit of marketing for car dealerships. And so helping her market for new patients for a large practice in Brooklyn. Then she gets accepted into Nova Southeastern University, first charter year here in Florida. We moved down to Florida. We got married here. And in 1998, my daughter was the first child born into the first charter year school, uh, dental school. Uh, so was very excited about that. I sold a business to Intel that has the A chip technology that you have probably in your iPhone and uh, found out that she was going to graduate and start her own practice from scratch right away. I said, great, I'll meet you at dinner. And she asked me to help her. She was going to build out a very small practice with just a couple of chairs. It wasn't about money for her. When we found out uh, that uh, there's more to it, I spoke to my Patterson rep at that time, and he said, we're making a major mistake. Let's build something with more chairs. We don't have to plumb them all now. And so the first year that we opened our practice was in 2001, and we collected a million dollars. Nice. Well, now these dentists... um. They have to wear so many hats. It's so hard to learn root canals, fillings, and crowns, but then you got to be 
uh, a leader and HR and, and marketing and accounting. And, and I, th I think the advantage of these uh, DSOs is they got by managing several offices, they get a bunch of full-time employees that don't have to work in the business of, of uh, making dentistry happen. They, they get to work on the business. So um, do you think um, Revenue Well is helping them work on the business? So I hear two things. New dentists coming out, struggling and DSOs figuring out what to do with the new dentist and everything else. So I'll start from the first thing. So yes, new dentists are coming out with very minimal experience of what it takes to run a practice. They have minimal experience on clinical, but they also have less experience in running practices. There's a reason why dental schools don't teach business during their clinical years is because there's just not enough time. They want to focus on what's going on clinically, which I've gone through. I've spent a lot of time. I'm um, clinically savvy. I understand that there's a lot to it. And learning the additional services like endo, special prosto, sleep apnea, and all of that, it's typically not their main goal. They want to get out and start somewhere. So originally, Dr. Nudell went into residency and has worked for one year at Coast Dental prior to opening up a uh, practice. So really understand what's going on in the DSO world. Uh, Dimitri is going to talk about that world in just a little bit, but Revenue Well entered that space aggressively knowing that it's growing and we have DSO specific um, platform that we have created that works in a much more interesting way than anybody else that has gone into the DSO space. And what percent of your business is dental as opposed to other verticals? A hundred percent of our business is dental. Wow, that is amazing. I mean, gosh, just on a, um, you're a huge company and, and you're that huge just in dentistry. Yes. Well, we realize that the TAM is different than what everybody thinks about. The total addressable market is not 180,000 practices, is the $10 billion that they spend annually in marketing. You're saying you're saying dentists in the United States spend ten billion annually on marketing? Right about there, yes. Wow, how did you get that number? We get that number from ADA, we get that number from many different sources, but uh, that's approximately what a dental practice, uh, well, a typical dental practice, depending on what stage it is, will spend between five to 10% marketing for new patients. They have major attrition issues that they're dealing with. So that's our numbers uh, recently that we uh, looked into uh, the total addressable number, and it's about $10 billion in marketing for anything, new patient cases or whatever it is that they're spending on the platforms and everything that is in the office. You know, when, when you have a marketing campaign, you know, it's got to come back down to zero space and zero time, get a common denominator. What, what, what do you think? They, um, they, they, Dennis can never tell me the average marketing cost to acquire a new patient. And then they can never tell me um, the value of that patient, um, you know, or even let alone the lifetime value of the patient. What, what do you think a uh, what, what do you think the average dentist is paying to acquire a new patient today? And what do you think the average lifetime value of a patient is in a dental practice? And how long do you think so, they stay? What we're seeing is that the average new patient will cost approximately $250 for a single owner operator. And we're seeing DSO spend between seven and $800 to acquire a new patient. And do you think that's a, uh, a good um, investment when a DSO spends seven to $800 on a new patient? The numbers are very different in the DSO world versus the regular world. I believe, yes. I think that is sustainable for them because the numbers work really simple. About $1,000 for a new patient the first year if you get them correctly. And uh, lifetime value of a patient is huge because I will say it's between what everybody says. It's about $35,000 today. So if you look at a DSO that is spending 700 bucks to acquire a big lifetime uh, value like that, it works 
numbers wise. I'm not exactly sure if it's something that I would do because I really separate marketing into two different categories. I look at external marketing and internal marketing completely different. So let me get this right. The average new patient in America costs 250. DSOs are um, probably spending 750. The average new patient is worth a thousand the first year and $35,000 over the lifetime value. Yes. Now, MTS Manji will say it's fifty thousand um, dollars, and I've heard as low as twenty-five. I'm somewhere in the middle, where I think within a lifetime of a patient, if you consider the referrals that that you will get from them, family members, or even just one case. Today, it's not uncommon to get a fifty thousand dollar case to do up and lower, all on four on a fifty-five year old male or female. So they're spending the money for sure. So um, not to get sidetracked, but you, you said you, um, you view internal marketing and external marketing separately. My homies listen to this show. I mean, they're 25% are still in school and the rest are all under 30. Um, explain the difference between internal marketing and external marketing to them. And why do you view it differently? Well, external marketing, you have some logistics and demographics you go through. And most of the people will go out for just new patients. Very rarely, if you take the 80-20 rule, only 20% of the professionals will actually market for implant cases, sleep cases, Invisalign, or anything else like that. Most of the, new, most of the practices are just looking for new patients. They're very unpredictable. Uh, statistically, you will only keep 41% of your new patients that come through the door because of the way that you get them, typically on a heavy discount or you're in network with insurance companies hoping that they will drive business to you. When it comes to internal marketing, where Revenue Well shines is, we have approximately 60 million patients under management inside Revenue Well. So with all the doctors that we have, we're watching patterns. What we figured out a long time ago is the artificial intelligence. And the artificial intelligence is when you have digital charts, whether it's clinical charts, perio charts. And with that, Revenue Well can read teeth numbers, we can read perio pockets, we can read dental codes. So we can look at a chart and divide it into two categories that it is. For instance, in a chart, you either have things that are existing, endo, crowns, bridges, implants, or you have proposed services. We recognize the services that are existing. We leave the patient alone with that. But when we market, we can actually attract a certain type of patient. For instance, if I'm a dentist that wants to do more implants and I could go and run a campaign in my database to look for patients that have missing teeth or to look for patients that have been proposed or as I call prescribed the treatment for restoration by an implant. That makes a world of a difference. Externally, there's nothing that you can stress out. Internally, you can put a lot of stress on your database. And this is why most of the other companies that are out there don't campaign a lot or the people that have them don't campaign a lot is because they've stressed out their database. They now look like used car salespeople. They only talk about certain things to everybody versus, hey, Dmitry, do you need an implant? Doctor said it's good for you. Here's some patient education video. Here's some information that only pertains to you. So we've been lucky to be able to push out a campaign to the right patient with the right message at the right time to bring them back into the practice. So when we look at our own database, we take the patients and we separate them into two categories. You either have an appointment or you don't. And where dental practices are really super awesome at is dealing with patients that have appointments. And Revenue Well is extremely awesome in dealing with patients that do not. Nice. So you said your own natural intelligence is, is creating artificial intelligence that looks at 60 million patients. How, how, how many dental offices is Revenue Well in these days? So I don't want to say a particular number because we have a lot of partners and we have a lot of people watching. I will say it's above 7,000. 
<laughs> okay, yeah. um, so Revenue Well is installed in 7,000 dental offices. So you are able to um, machine learn 60 million uh, patients off Correct. that? Correct. So we, we capture proposed treatments and we capture walkout statements. And a walkout statement, I don't know what software you're using, is a receipt of services that have been rendered with the codes and the procedures. And so we see what has been proposed, what has been walked out, what still needs to be completed. Wow, that, that is amazing. Um, gosh, that data, I mean, they, uh, you could learn so much from looking at all that kind of data. So um, so what, so what? L- let's slow down for the, the kids that are in dental school. Um, wh- what, are you, what do you actually do? What, what is Revenel? What, what is their marketing platform? How much does it cost? Go, go into the specifics of what dentists are paying for. Is it just, is there one plan? Is there multiple plans? Um, um, is it one price for all dental offices? Or go through the, this is dentistry and sensor, go through the dirty details. So the dirty details are very clean. We have something that is called the Revenue Well Core. And the core is our system. And the price for Revenue Well Core is only 339 That will include- 339 a month? Tri- 339 a month without a contract, no installation fees, no training fees. Everything is included. We do a lot of webinars. We're holding our customers' hands. The only thing that we do not do is we don't coach and we don't consult. Okay. And and when they're signing up for three thirty nine a month, why are they doing that? What what services are they mainly like? If I go to McDonald's, it's a Big Mac, Fry, and Coke. What what are, what are they buying at Revenue? Well, what's your Big Mac, Fry, and Coke? Okay, so we have three parts that we sell that is really driving all the business. One of the buckets is the new patient acquisition bucket. We are helping dentists with new patient acquisition by setting them up on social media, putting widgets onto their website, providing an additional microsite that helps them get found online. We have integration with Facebook and Twitter. We have a great place on Google local page that describes your business where revenue well is seen. Now online, we are seen as patient connect 365 revenue. Well is a name for our customers, but patients never see it. Okay. Patient facing is patient connect 365. So if you Google a guy like rally dental arts, this guy T-Bone, Tarun Argwal, you ever heard of him? I love that guy. (laughs) Him and Samir were my only two dental partners I ever had in dentistry. I I never, I never did partnerships and, and, and our partnership was over a phone call with no contracts. Yes. So love him. What an amazing man. Raleigh Dental Arts is one of the most difficult offices to be successful in for a company like myself because the team is exceptional. They have everything figured out and we still do a million dollars of business in the last three years with them. And so when you Google Raleigh Dental Arts, of course, T-Bone spends quite a bit of money to stay on top because he wants to be in a, on top in a very competitive uh, market. So on the right hand side on Google, Patient Connect 365 and Facebook is there with reviews and everything about his business because of the microsite that we provided and because of the app that we put onto his Facebook that displays reviews, including Google reviews. He has 176 Google reviews averaging a 4.9. Is is T-Bone number one? I mean, how could you be better than that? He is not number one. He wants to believe he's number one. Uh, Tebow is number one. Him, I don't I would, believe it either. <laughs> you know, but where he is good, it's not about getting Google reviews. It's getting the right Google reviews. And if you read his reviews, people are writing articles and statements. It's not like T-Bone's cool. They're actually addressed in certain members. And it's not about the most amount of reviews anymore. As a matter of fact, there's only a certain amount of reviews that people will read and people that are in the review business will continuously ask the same people on Google to give you reviews. Unfortunately, 
on Google, you can only have one per customer. So if you have a great review, here's a tip, stop asking them for additional ones because it only goes downhill from there. And that's why he's got a certain amount that he concentrates. And those he got recently because he started concentrating. And of course, Revenue Well has a review platform that will help him drive customers to Google and directly to Google. And basically you get what you get and don't get upset. We don't gate anything anymore. We used to be able to say, hey, if it's eight or above, let's send them to Google. We're just going straight to Google. But if you also notice, his website is high up as well because we have a testimonial tool that puts real Google reviews on there. And if you also notice, if you Googled uh, Rally Dental Arts, on the right, you have his Google local page and towards, you know, towards the bottom of it, it says patient connect 365. And if you click on patient connect 365, there will be a micro site that he's got his videos on that we highly encourage people to use YouTube in all of their communications. And we can talk about that as well as highlight his staff because a lot of people know his staff, know his team and may be looking for them and just great way to get an additional way to get found online. Most of the doctors are looking for one uh, way to be found online in the top 10 and T-Bone has three to four to five and most of them are Revenue Well. So does Revenue Well own Patient Connect 365? Yes. Okay, so that's yes. yours. And that is that's because a, why? Well, because Revenue Well is not a great way to get in front of your patients. So when we would ask him to leave a review on Revenue Well or anything else like that, that would not be right. Where Patient Connect just says exactly what it is, is that you're connected with your patients 365. And that is a better way, cleaner way to be in front of your patient facing them. So why would, why would a dentist want to, um, instead of driving uh, traffic to their dental office website, um, have an, another option right underneath the pa the dental office website with a patient new sixty uh, patient connect three sixty five. So what we're trying to do is fill up the page with additional oh, content. Okay, duh. That we have an ability to control and showcase what we want to showcase there. So not every Google review, not every review that we get is just what we want to showcase goes over there and all the content we control. And it's very easy for Google to search that and may come up first than actual websites because we don't control what our customers do with their websites. So as you know, you can have a really beautiful website set up for 20, 30,000 or not. And so dentists typically don't spend that kind of money and their website is a brochure of their services versus a marketing machine. And we prefer it to be a marketing machine. Um, okay. So, um, that, that, that is really an amazing strategy. I haven't comprehended before. So when I Google rally dental arts versus T bones website, rally dental arts.com next is yeah. rally dental arts on patient connect 365. Then it's his Correct. Facebook page. Then it's his Which Yelp reviews. I mean the whole, the he's controlled the whole first page of the search. Correct. And you will not see a whole bunch of ads there as well. Typically, there would be three or four ads of local dentists that may possibly have bigger practices and more money, which is almost impossible, but they can't compete because he owns that page. At least the top three to five um, reviews or anything that you can have. And if you go into his website, you can see the testimonials and right away you will see Google reviews that are living right there. Wow, that is um, so. Um, not to digress because we were on the. Um, you said there was uh, three things yes. uh, that Revenue Well does, but but back to his fir first page, um, Yelp is um, on there. What what are your thoughts on Yelp? Fantastic! It works in some states better than others. We love them. I have zero issues with them. I do not concentrate on them. We concentrate on stuff that we can control. Cannot control Yelp. But succinctly, do you think a dentist um, should um, join Yelp and pay them money for a management fee or just stay out of it and let Yelp be Yelp and stay out of it? Or do you think they should, um, because it, doesn't Yelp sell services to dental offices? It does. So 
my answer on that is again, if you're in San Francisco, yes. If you're in New York, yes. If you're in Miami, absolutely not. Yelp has zero influence here. What about Phoenix? I'm so I'm a selfish bastard. I want to know about my today's dental. What what would you say about uh, so Phoenix? Phoenix, I'm not very sure about that market, but uh, I would try it. The only problem with Yelp is that no matter how much money you give them, you cannot control it. And if you have three or four patients that same day give you reviews on Yelp and they're not big Yelpers, they will not show up. And so I want consistency and I want to make sure that whatever I'm using in my office that I can consistently do to improve my visibility and control my visibility. And so if Yelp is Yelp and they do whatever it is that they want to do, that's fine. Uh, they're not expensive. If you have additional money for external marketing, I would give it a try for sure. So yeah, I wouldn't okay. put all my eggs into that basket. Okay. So you got three parts, uh, part one, new patient acquisition bucket. What's part two and three? Part two is patient retention, and part three is treatment acceptance. Wow. Okay, that's a, that's enough to talk for about 40 days and 40 nights. So uh, <laughs> uh, patient retention. Okay, the, 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 dark, the, the dark side of marketing and dentistry is that you always meet a dentist who went to a town at 10,000 at age 25. He's practiced there from 25 to 65. You say, hey, buddy, what do you need? He says, I need new patients. I'm like, dude, you've gone through everyone in the county three times. Um, it, to me, it seems like the more new patients you get, the less problems internally you have to fix. And if you fixed everything internally, you wouldn't need so many uh, new patients. Almost like new patient can be a drug um, to uh, not fix all their problems. But what, what, what do you think the average patient retention rate is? Well, we know exactly. Uh, so if you look at a practice between zero to five years, their retention is approximately 70%. So they will see 70% of their uh, active patient base. And active patient base, in my eyes, are patients that have been in the practice within 18 months, not patients that are marked active in the practice management software. Okay. So I like to add a little algorithm to my numbers because I feel that not everybody does a good job with their practice management software. And when you say algorithm, you're trying to make a mathematical prediction of, um, of, from their past behavior, trying to predict their future behavior? So, yes. So what I'm saying is that here's very simple stuff. When you look at a practice management software, there are active patients that are inside that practice management software. They might have not been in for four or five years, they might have not been in for three or anything else. By me saying, I'll put an algorithm on it, I'll say, I'll consider active patients that have been in the practice for 18 months. So I'll put a little shape to it. Instead of just looking blindly at a number that says, here's how many active patients are marked in the practice management system, I will say patients that actually been to the practice and had something done in the last 18 months that I will consider active patients. Dimitri, uh, what do you think on that? Well, I, I think Alex, I think you're absolutely correct. Um, but again, I think one of the things you, you we talked about a little bit earlier is marketing and pension retention and all this, uh, Howard, you mentioned, let's get new patients. But then you look at your own database and you realize you have all these patients who at some point were given a treatment plan, but actually never reached out and never completed the treatment plan. And I think that's where revenue all steps in. So we're going to talk about that in bucket number three, Dimitri, yeah. when it comes to treatment access. So if you have a practice that is five years and above, those numbers go down. So if you ask 100 dentists, 90% of them will say that they're in the top 10%. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you ask 100 office managers, they will tell you that 80% of their patients actually have a future appointment and is active. And that is simply not true. So when we look at active patients, the more patients you have and the longer you have been in business, the larger the problem actually becomes. The more stuff you throw against the ceiling, um, the, more, the less things stick. So if you look at a patient's retention, if in the practice that's five years and above, that is trying to grow, it's going to be in the 60 percentile versus 
70%, which is really tough because if you're a million dollar practice, you're start, starting in the rear. That's why you're chasing those new patients all the time to make up for it versus going into the, into your database and figuring out how to get those uh, reactivated versus getting new patients. Why do you think most patients leave when you don't retain someone and they leave? What do you think it is mostly? A million different reasons. First of all, I will say it depends on how you got them. If you are an office that is advertising $59 special exam x-rays and profi, and the next time the person at the front desk calls and says, hey, we want to schedule, you left without a future appointment, the question will become how much, and they will tell them $220, the patient will say, I'll wait. That could be one of the reasons. Second reason mean, could be that not everybody is really big on scheduling future appointments. So right now what we're seeing is about 50% of the patients are being put onto schedules. Now there are practices that there are 80%, 90% uh, scheduled. The problem with that is they have a high no-show rate. So you gotta be really careful on how you schedule your future appointments, but when it comes to reactivation, it's a completely different animal altogether. When you look at hygiene in general, there's two different types. There's healthy mouth patients that are supposed to be in every six months and there are every six months and there are periodontally diseased patients. And I think that a lot of practices do not know how to deal with those periodontally diseased patients and do not mark them correctly in the practice management software and do not explain the why. Why do these patients need to actually get onto the schedule for future appointments? They lose track of them. That's one of the reasons. And then, you know, we talk about millennials, right? They have a phobia of a commitment to begin with. So because they have this big phobia, they're not scheduling and you're doing a big job chasing them. Retention is a very big problem in today's market, especially for a DSO. And, and what is the um, what, do, what do you think the average um, patient um, not coming back is because of a transient society that we have today well, versus before there were interstates and so we don't know how to deal with patients anymore. We've tried everything in the whole entire world. We're listening to way too many people. There's way too many groups, and we get confused. There's two types of patients in your practice, right? They either have an appointment or they don't. Take those patients with appointments. They either have insurance or they don't. We do not talk about the same things like we used to. And so uh, Chuck Blakeman wrote a book called Making Money is Killing Your Business. And he's 100% correct that we don't do the same things that we used to do on our climb up with our practice. So we don't always explain the why they need to come back, why they need to be seen every three, four months versus six months for healthy mouth patients. And because of that, we're just scattered and we don't proactively reach out to those patients and we have major problems keeping them on the books. Okay, so part one was new patient, part two was patient retention, and part three is a uh, treatment plan um, acceptance rate. What, what do you think of the uh, average treatment plan acceptance rate is for the United States? Well, the United States, I want to say, I'll give you numbers that we have inside revenue well. 50%. Huh. That, that, that's, um, when I was lecturing down in Florida, it was to a dental insurance um, corporation, uh, I mean, association, so I got a look at all their data. They, they wouldn't let me publish it or have it. They, they really hide their cards on their own data. Um, but they, they were saying it was about a third, but you think it's, uh, but they're just dealing with insurance patients. But you yeah. think the average dental office insurance and cash is, is, it's half. If I tell two different people they each need a filling, one will do it. Yes. And so 80% of the Revenue Well customers are a little bit higher end dentists. They have technology, CAD cam, they have your CBCTs. They're doing more services than a general dentist. There's a lot of sleep apnea going on and everything else. And so Dimitri and I talk about this all the time, that if you're a million dollar practice, you propose $2 million to get there. Say that again, if you're a million dollar practice, it takes 2 million what? You have proposed $2 million oh, okay, okay, to okay, get yeah. there. 
Okay. So, and we talk about the cracks in every dental office. And so instead of going after the patients that know you love you and you just haven't convinced them enough, you weren't a good enough salesperson or you're chasing the DSO model to where you're this amazing dentist that refuses to speak to the patient and go take him through the full thing, even including numbers, right? Because if you're a DSO, you're trying to keep that dentist far away, brand new dentist, just, let's just keep him away from the patients, never show them without a mask and we'll do all the work. The front desk will go over the treatment, we'll go over the numbers, we'll schedule them, we'll tell the dentist what to do. Uh, in the world today, uh, Arun Garg, I'm not familiar, I don't know if you know him, and we, he's one of my mentors, T-Bone is one of my mentors as well. I have the Indian mentors. So you're better off proposing your own treatment and going through your own stuff because if there's anything that needs to be changed, at least you know where to go. You're proposing somebody a $35,000 treatment on the first day that they came to your practice. They don't know anything about you. You might have not set up everything correctly. You said, hey, you have a laundry list of what's going on. Give it to Betty. Betty has no idea how she's going to make her next month payment on a $299 car. And meanwhile, she's got to ask for the patient to give you $35,000. The patient says, you know what? I'm not really sure, but I'd like to start on the right-hand side. Betty says, no, it's either all or nothing. If you're the dentist, you'll be more than happy to start on the right side. And so you have no way of doing that. So a whole bunch of treatment does not get accepted because it gets handed off to somebody that hasn't been trained. And then it is up to revenue. Well, in our case to go after it. So we have two different modules to be able to go after that business. One of them is an actual treatment plan, follow-up module where you can set up a cadence and you can say anything you want. And that includes procedures and teeth numbers and codes, and it includes patient education videos from Casey to be able to continue what's going on in the practice. So I've never been to your practice, but Kathy Brodell says hello. Oh, Kathy. Oh, I love her. Is she in South Dakota? She is. Uh, so she's a great friend of mine, and we have very similar philosophy on how things work. And so if a patient says no to treatment, a dental office rarely would make a phone call. And if they will, it's only on top cases. And when they make a phone call, they have really nothing to show. And when they have nothing to show to visual people, how are you going to get your case done? So I've never been to your practice, but I'm sure you have a monitor in front of your patients, right? Right. Where you might show a digital x-ray, intro camera Kath picture. Kathy Brodel might... designed that for my office. She's a very smart lady. Oh, yeah. She's a, she's a genius, and she did that for me 20 years ago. And, but I want to interject one thing real quick, because when you said present a $35,000 treatment plan, uh, half my homies, you just lost, and they're like, what is he talking about? He's in rich Miami. I'm in poor Salina, Kansas. Hey, according to Kelly Blue Book Value, USA Today, and Anthony Pratt, of the Polk Director of Forecasting, the average American will buy 13 new cars uh, before they're 76 years old with a mean, median average price of 33560 So everyone, and so then I go look at my homies and 95% of them will practice their whole career without even doing one of these $33,000 cases because they think nobody has any money, but all their patients will buy 13 cars. And then by age 74, 20% of Americans don't even have a single tooth. And it's the, the dentists are thinking with their brakes on and they even are the first to tell you, man, I hate sales. I hate presenting treatment. I didn't go to school eight years to sell something. Is Alex a salesman? Alex is a salesman, absolutely. And Alex is a salesman that has the most successful customers. And Alex also knows that in order to be successful, you have to ask for it. And if you don't ask for it, you will never get it. And if you pre-qualify your customer, that is the number one mistake you will ever make in the whole entire world. Because when I go out looking for a car, I will first stop by at Walmart and I will buy myself a champion $22 sweatsuit and $7 sneakers. And I will walk in and I will walk out with a $35,000 car, maybe not a $35,000 car, but I will walk out with a $300 payment. And that $35,000, uh, the whole restoration that will change their life is only 600 bucks a month. They just don't know how to present it. They don't teach their staff to present it and they will never get it if they don't ask. But you have to make sure that you're able to deliver it. You can't just 
come out of school and say, I'm going to do full mouth reconstruction because that's going to be the worst case in the world for you because you need to know what not to do as much as you need to know what to do. And over the years, the beauty of us, you know, of our dental office is knowing to walk away from a case, to walk away from a customer or a patient that just came in and says, hey, my mouth is messed up because my previous dentist made it this way, and I'm gonna be suing that guy or that gal for doing that, and all I wanna do is ask if it's okay for me to get all the treatment presentations that were planned for them. So, yes, you don't have to be the best dentist in the world. You don't need $35,000 cases to be successful. As a matter of fact, all you need is five grand a day, four days a week to have a million dollar practice. It's just that simple. What Revenue Well will allow you to do is make sure that you are doing patient care as well. And if you propose a treatment to a patient and you never follow up, that means you don't care about them. And that's the biggest problem that we always have. And today, if you go to court for some reason and you never followed up on your patient and you never made a phone call or you never send an email or you never educate them and you never show that you're concerned, that is going to be an issue as well. So we help the dentist make sure that if you propose the endo tooth number two and the patient doesn't do it and the treatment plan follow-up goes out by email, that is a record showing it's a better record than making the phone call because 90% of the people that make phone calls do not go into the notes and mark down that, hey, I called Betty, we spoke about this, she told me no for now, and I have time scheduled in the next two weeks to follow up with her. That rarely happens. So Revenue Well helps them, as well as custom campaigns. Custom campaigns are huge. And so, Dimitri, give me an idea of what custom campaigns can do for a DSO versus a standard practice. And talk about DSO for a second for us. Um, so, of course, GSOs are growing, and uh, there's a great study done by Morgan Stanley that talks about the conversion rate. So, in um, last year, um, almost 10% of dentists said they're actively looking to join DSO for various reasons, right? DSOs have usually higher reimbursement rates. Um, they certainly they pay a lot higher to the starting uh, to, to, to the students or the young graduates coming out. But more importantly, it gives you cadence for communications. It's a great way to keep track. Also, it's a great to track to keep up ROI, so you actually see how many patients come in, get an email, raise their hand, make an appointment, come in, and we actually track the treatment plan cost so we can show what the ROI is. So it's extremely important. Number two- What is the two, average ROI on a Revenue Well customer? The, the average ROI is 20X. So we increase production between seventy dollars and $80,000 per year for practice, which is pretty significant. So we're talking 20x return, which is- How did you get that huge. number? Uh, that, well, that number based what it cost, uh, to, what it cost to, to have revenue well on a monthly basis versus the production increase. And that's how we get to that number. But I want to add something else is a lot of times and when I was on, on, on the hardware side, what do dentists do when they buy new technology? Spend $100,000. And the next question is, hey, how do I market that? What do I do with it? So another great way is actually introduce new treatment plan options, new technology. It's a great to reach out uh, to the patient, say, hey, come on in. Now I have, I, have an, I have an orthodontist. I'm doing endo. I'm doing more implantology. And I have technology to match that. So this connectivity between patients, whether you're a DSO, whether you're a large group practice, whether you're a sole practitioner, it's extremely effective way which gives you discipline. And more importantly, gives you a connectivity with a patient, and it actually tracks your ROI. Now, one of the things we talked about a little bit earlier, how much dollars dentists spend on attracting new patients. But if you actually ask them a question, how many patient, new patients you attracted, I think most of them will really struggle to tell you that, right? And, and this is where we come in, and we do it so well in an extremely disciplined way, allowing them to stay connected. And um, right. Go ahead. Go ahead. What you've been doing uh, over a thousand of these podcasts, what are dentists looking back as an ROI when they're doing a marketing campaign externally? 
Well, it's tough to say, as you know, um, a dentist, because there's 211,000 Americans who have an active license a day. There's 150,000 general dentists, 30,000 specialists that are working 32 hours a week or more. And like say, some of them are straight out of school. You know, they just graduated from dental kindergarten and some are seasoned. But the one thing I do know, and it's very obvious, and I hope you kids are listening, is that I love you for the fact that you just want to learn how to do surgery all day long, better, faster, easier, root canals, fillings, crowns. I get all that, and that's why I love you. But do you notice when when you say to uh, Marco Vukacek, you know, what does the average dentist collect each year? He'll say 788. But if you ask a dental consultant, they'll say a million too. You already said the average revenue well um, person, uh, you know, has um, bigger numbers, higher sales and net income. And if... if um, I, I was telling you, you were, you were talking about technology. I mean, the best return on investment is business. Go back, get your MBA, get a dental consultant, but they always want to buy a gosh darn CBCT, a CAD cam, a laser. I mean, if, if you go to a dental convention, when they're looking at lasers, they actually start drooling on the laser and they get saliva all over it. <laughs> and then then I'll say to that person, hey, what was your uh, last year, you know, how many... How many new patient calls did you get in the first quarter of this year versus last year? I don't know. Um, how many people have to call your office before one converts? I don't know. How many people land? I mean, they, they don't know any of their numbers. So I don't have to motivate anyone to want to go see Gordon Christian. My God, they think he's Yoda. They go drive all the way to Provo. I've been up there 12 times. I mean, you know, you don't have to motivate a dentist to watch a 40-hour seminar on bonding agents, but you really got to, it's tough to get them to go from being Dr. Never Do It, who hates selling, to Transformer into Dr. ABC Always Be Closing. I mean, it's a totally yeah. different mindset. And the mindsets of the people that went into dentistry and medicine, they didn't have that mindset that the kids did that went into business school. I agree with you. They also don't hire for that. And then when you're taking your average person in dentistry, that's really all they care about is their own personal time. Hey, I'm gonna go work for somebody that is open business hours, not retail hours, business hours, Monday through Thursday, where I get three days off. And then all of a sudden they're trying to incentivize me to sell more stuff. And so this is why Revenue Well does so awesome is because we can have the office manager launch a campaign. See, here's the major problem. Most of the companies that are out there, you can send one campaign a month. Otherwise you'll look like that used car salesperson. But because we're going after certain codes and certain procedures, we can do 20 a day without reaching the same person twice. That means that I could go after sleep apnea patients by using the sleep apnea code. I could say anybody who with D6010 for implants. So the system will make things easier for the dentist and will actually go after only what you need. Many people are telling me our hygiene are soft and we look into their practice management software. We run a report on how many root planning and scaling they have completed. And we run a report on how many of those patients are on perio maintenance. And there's a major discrepancy. They all should be on perio maintenance. So inside Revenue Well, you can say anybody that went through 4341, the root planning and scaling, but is not on perio maintenance, let's teach them. And so we have a very strong YouTube integration with every campaign. You can record a little video explaining the why. Hey, we're reaching out to you because we're concerned that you haven't scheduled your next appointment. We're concerned you didn't come in for follow-up. We're doing things like post-up instructions to where when somebody walks out a, an extraction, we do a post-up instruction for the extraction, but next week we're asking, hey, you should, we probably spoke to you about implants and you should have an appointment, but if you don't, it's important you make one and this is why. And so we're giving them all kinds of different teleprompting programs to use to record beautiful videos so their patients can understand. They're building their YouTube channels out better and it's a money-making machine. It's a machine, Howard, to where you stick 10 bucks into revenue, well, you'll get 200 bucks back. So it's one of those things to, we have happy customers, more than 99% of the customers stay with us without a contract. Wow. And that's another red flag. I mean, um, you know, you, you, in dental school, you meet the love of your life and you want to start living together and all that stuff, but then, then out of nowhere comes, I need a contract. I need an absolute signed contract. And if you break this, it'll be a million dollars. I mean, um, 
I mean, you got to have a prenuptial agreement. And when you hire these dental consultants and they say, well, here's a contract. You you have to keep me for at least a year. It's like, well, your patient doesn't have to keep you for a year. Your staff can walk out on the job if they don't like you. I mean, it's just such a red flag to me uh, when um, they um, when companies want a contract. Um, talk about that. Here. So we have over 300 affiliates. Fortune Management is one of our affiliates, for instance, and we have a lot of single coaches and consultants. When you look at external marketing and when you look at a coach or a consultant, you have to give it enough time. Moscow was not built in a day. This is our very funny Russian joke, right? But the fact of the matter is, you have to address many different things in your practice, and it's all about your capacity to be able to scale. And so if you hire somebody that has a great plan for you and is going to be training, you have to start with the team. You got to get the team on board. Otherwise, things don't happen. So I am a fan of signing those one-year contracts with an opt-out option to where if they totally don't produce, but I have zero issues with that. Where I have a problem is a company like ourselves coming and saying, hey, you sign a contract with us. Although we have more and more customers that are actually asking us to sign a contract with them because they want us to secure our pricing. They want to make sure that we don't modify some of the things because besides Revenue Well Core, we also have a great partnership with Jive. So we have tremendous voice over IP product with telephones. Okay. We also have... We also have Patient Connect 365 TV to where we help you control what's inside your waiting room. You know, because we used to walk into practices and I travel 200 days a year. I've been into over a thousand practices, co-traveling with reps, whether it's Patterson and DC, whatever our partners are. And you see the news on and it's grim. So they switched to Common Garden and now you're, instead of fighting the news, you're fighting the kitchen upgrade, which is the same amount of money as your teeth or you're fighting, you know, Mario Batelli on Fool and Garden. You want to travel to Tuscany to drink wine over there. So Revenue Well has a great program for, it's called Patient Connect TV for the inside office. We have Messenger, which allows you to do two-way communication, even if a patient is not in your practice management software, to where if you're marketing, your patients could already uh, do double uh, two-way texting with you. We have these tools that we're trying to help our customers be as successful as they want. And we do have a small percentage of customers that use some basic functions of ours just because they're super high-end. And um, I just want to I just want to add something. You know, Howard, we just did a, a quick study with Revenue Well customers. We took a look at four thousand offices, and as soon as those offices implemented Revenue Well, guess what? They got on the average seventy six more appointments per month with Revenue Well. I said this correctly. Seventy six existing customers. Seventy. So the that average is dentist who signs up for Revenue Well sees seventy six more existing patients per month. No, it sees more appointments per month. Could you with existing patient base, but on the average, they see increasing appointments made by 76 on the average. And this, this is a study done by us, and we looked over. There's a, there's a, there's a, a great PDF I'll share with you. It's called the ROI of Revenue Well. Some of the takeaways is that 76 more appointments per month were seen on the average by these practices who utilize Revenue Well. Okay, uh, so if they go to your website, revenuewell.com, is that, um, I see resources, is that on your website under articles, ebooks, infographics, miscellaneous webinars, any of that? That's yes. correct. That is correct. We include that. So we run a webinar series called Practice Perfect, where we take some of the biggest names you know, and you've interviewed a whole bunch of them, and we pay, put these co top coaches and consultants for tips and tricks and see what to do. We also have a webinar series that I'm doing that is called PAR, Patient Analysis Reports, where we're looking at different parts of your analysis in the practice, showing you how to better engage your patients. And we also are doing a whole bunch of uh, new customer webinars. We're trying to help our community just do more with their existing patients and separate themselves from everybody else that is in the market. 
Wow. Okay. Um, so you, I, I want to say something though. Um, you mentioned, uh, um, I mean, you, you have so much data. Um, let, let's switch completely away from the dentist provider and go over to the third of a billion Americans. What, what do they want? Because the reason I'm asking is they come out of school, they've barely learned how to do a few fillings and crowns and root canals, and they don't know, should I learn to place implants first, like T-bone? Should I learn how to do Invisalign? Should I learn sleep apnea? Should I get a CAD cam? How would you, prior, based on your understanding of the American market, what do you think has the highest ROI? CAD cam, lasers, what? what? Where, where would you start for the young kid? All right, so... I have to tell you that in our practice, we, we started doing CAD CAM in 2003. And the reason why we did it is we have a high end patient base and a low end patient base. And with the promise of being able to do dentistry in a single visit versus two or three, that helped us as a case acceptance tool. There's less of a learning curve today. I think that is a great marketing tool that if you have 2,000 patients that are active and you just got a new tool, it's helping you do quite a bit of patient reactivation with it. Just by being able to go and say, hey, we got this amazing new piece of technology that is helping us to do single visit dentistry. We know you're super busy. We also know you have three crowns that need to be done that could be done all in one visit please schedule your appointment today. That's one thing. We know that services initially as a patient, people want to go to the same place. They don't want to be shuffled around to go to specialists unless they have to. And so if I was a new dentist and a new dentist within five years, I would absolutely try to start every year to learn something new. That's how you grow a practice. And so implants, according to Noble Biocare, there's 42 million teeth get extracted every year, only two and a half million gets restored. Is the opportunity that, is, is great. Is that for the US or the world? It is in the United States. 42 million teeth get extracted each year in the United States. Yup, and only two and a half get restored. T-Bone says two. <laughs> so here's the major, window of opportunity, take a look in what you have in your practice management system and go after that. I have people with holes in their head. I'm going to go and learn how to place implants. And what I will learn when I do learn to place implants is exactly what not to do. Maybe I'll start with some, you know, posterior, maybe I'll start with some interior or some basic things, but I will have healthier patients uh, throughout the time. And so if you're a dentist that is doing dentures, you can run a campaign that we delivered dentures this year, but we just started fixing them to implants and very profitable. And instead of, so here's the whole thing, Howard. It takes an hour to do an MODBL composite from the time you start, and inside the patient, you'll get 200 bucks. It takes an hour to do an inlay, onlay, and a crown, you'll get 1,200 bucks. It takes an hour to put in four implants and you get 6,000 bucks. So just figure it out, right? It takes an hour to prep somebody to do a clear aligner ortho case, which may or may not be profitable, but that's where you got to look at. What do I want to do and what do I have? Can I say the word balls to do? <laughs> Can you say it? Because a lot of dentists, yes. See, females... Females today have a lot more balls and do things much faster, better, more gently than any man that I see. And these female dentists are learning things faster, and I see them consistently. So implant seminar, I, I see all those people that go through there. And when you talk to them, they say it's the best thing that they've ever done in their whole entire life. But yes, you have to invest into learning how to do it, you know how to diagnose it, you need a restorative kit, you need a surgical kit, you, and not what the salespeople tell you, 100% more than what you think this is gonna take in the beginning. You need to be able to shut down your office and go somewhere to learn about these things. So everybody immediately, I would go for ortho, I would go for implants, I would go for that right away and make a plan, a five-year plan, which a lot of dentists don't have business plans as it is. You know what, the, um, you've heard of um, affordable dental um, 
affordable dental care services out of New York who has, yes. oh, I don't know, how many, how many locations do you think they have? Uh, well over 100. You know how they yep. built, you know what their core marketing was to, from the beginning to this day? When they go into a market, they just do this simple advertising of a $99 extraction. Because who do you know that needs a tooth extracted that doesn't have a train wreck of a mouth needing perio and cavities and root canals and crowns and implants? And they're like, God, we would, we would pull a, a, a tooth for free to meet that patient as opposed to Absolutely. say you got me as a new patient. You know, hell, I haven't had a cavity in 30 years. But then you have 80% of the dentists that be walking around, well, I don't want to lose money when the first time when a patient comes in because I have to do this and it costs me $30 to set up a room. They just don't know. And I agree with you 100%. That's the clear path. Get them into the door. The problem is they don't understand what it takes to market. And the first thing of marketing is making sure that the person that answers the phone can convert. Right, right. Bring wow. them in. It's just a whole new car culture. So how would you how would you train never uh, Doctor Never Do It to start uh, uh, turn into uh, Doctor ABC always be closing or ABS always be selling? So there's a building <laughs> there's a building in San Francisco. It's 450 Center Place, right? 100 dentists, 168 and separate dental offices, 168 dental offices, and seven labs. I've been there so many times. So I walk that with a good friend of mine that is a rep from Patterson Dental and I go up and down and here's what you get. On the 21st floor and on the 23rd floor, everything goes. On the 22nd floor, the guy upstairs and downstairs is a stupid moron, doesn't know how to do business and shouldn't be here at all. The 21st floor, they do $3 million. The 23rd, they do two and a half. And the guy that says everybody's stupid can hardly break 700000 in the same building. It's mindset, mindset, mindset. So, yes, if you're Dr. Appa in Rosenthal in New York or you're Dr. ABC in Kansas, you still have to sell. If not cases, sell yourself. You know who the best salespeople in the world are, Howard? Who? Cardiologists. Yeah, because if you don't do it, you're going to die. Yeah. Well, at least that's what they make you believe. And they also tell you that, hey, there's a 40% chance you will survive. You never say anything to them. But when your dentist says you need a freaking, you know, a cavity filled, then it's going to be a $120 copay. Somebody will turn around and say, well, I'll think about it. Because we propose services because we're preventative on teeth that do not hurt. They're not, they're not swollen. They're not bleeding and they're not infected yet. And that's what we're trying to stop. We need to learn to sell and the office, the team needs to be able to say that Dr. Howard Ferren is the best doctor in the whole entire world. You're with him. He's got you exactly where you need to be. The only thing you have to do is say yes to everything that he proposes to you because he's got your best interest in mind. And that's the bottom line. When your office team members can say that about you, everything else becomes easier. Okay, well, I want to. This is dentistry and sensor, so I like to uh, um, ask the tough questions. And we are, uh, I can't believe we're well over the hour, so we got to wrap this up quick because they're, uh, uh, that's their commute to work. That's what they always tell us. But um, everybody in, in Wall Street, you mentioned Morgan Stanley. Um, they, whenever they analyze the company, they always want to analyze their um, competitors. So who's the competitor in your space? I'm assuming it's uh, Lighthouse 360, Legwork, Practice Mojo, Solution Reach, which was formerly Smile Reminder. What would you say to a kid listening to this saying, well, what, what's different than you and all the others? What is your unique so, selling proposition? Our unique selling proposition is we know digital charts. We know your patients. We know how to deal with the patients that say no. We can get you cases. We can get your patients to come in for crown and bridge work instead of just showing up and not knowing what they're there for and what they're going to do. We are offering a full service without a contract. And like I said, 99% of the people stay with us. And the reason is, is they're profitable. So it's not, let's confirm appointments anymore, which we do. It's about being able to welcome a new patient into the practice. What we found out is we have forms, the digital forms. If a new patient fills out 
the digital forums, 99% chance they're going to come into the practice. We reduce no-shows. We help the practice do what they do best, see the patients with appointments, and we continuously keep on driving the patients back. We can separate the healthy mouth patients from the disease patients. And I think that anybody that ever starts with us and leaves, well, 80% of them come back. So I don't want to say anything negative about anybody else. But if you're going to spend the money, spend it on something that is going to make you money, save your time, make you efficient, make you productive, raise your hourly wages by using revenue well, put the right patients into the seats and you will be happy. Everybody else is just playing the Me Too game. We refuse to do that. And I just want, uh, Harold, I just want to add, and we have absolutely phenomenal customer success team, which provides unbelievable support. And that's also extremely critical when you want to service your customer base, is have extremely strong customer service. And last question, uh, um, you guys are both Russian. Did you, did you meet in Russia, or was it a Russian community, or...? <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, Howard. I know every single Russian. There's no question about that. By the way, do you know Mike Jones in Arizona? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, the other one. So, so here's what we do. We hire the best people that we can for our customers and for our patients. Some of them happen to be Russian. I mean, it was a big score to be able to take Dmitry from Plan Mecca and put him to work for a serious company. <laughs> that is amazing. I, I love Russia. I, I left in St. Petersburg, and that was the time of my life. Uh, but my God, they were uh, they were first in space, first woman in space, first dog in space, landed a first droid in space. Man, they just have an intense um, um, scientific uh, education in their uh, their community. But hey, I wish uh, you guys would. I mean, if I Google Revenue Well, which I just did on Dental Town, I mean, it's literally. I mean, my gosh, how many pages? I mean, it's a, it's it's five pages of uh, threads asking about revenue well. I, I wish it'd really be an honor if you guys uh, uh, went in there as the founder and CEOs and uh, um, and answered some of their questions. I, th I think it'd be amazing. I will absolutely do that. And I'll put Dimitri in charge, <laughs> and it's going to be a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, Howard, you know, I won some of the competitions. I've been to uh, seven or eight uh, townie meetings, and uh, you might remember me dressed up as a chef at the Bellagio and <laughs> with Patterson Dental. We love it, and we're definitely looking to come back. And I, I am a big fan. We have a lot of – Sandy Perdue, by the way, says hello. Then we have a lot of big fans uh, internally. We listen to your stuff all the time. Well, I have a, I, I have a picture of you uh, in your contact that I saved at the townie meeting with this big belt on and everything. You should make that your avatar picture. It is so dang cute. Uh, but, um, <laughs> thank you. But, uh, hey, uh, seriously, man, I want to thank you guys for all that you do for dentistry. The only reason this shows the success is because really smart, creative geniuses like you come in and share their knowledge. I want to thank you so much to both of you for coming on the show today. Thank, Thank you, Howard. Howard. All we right. hope to get another chance with you. Get yeah. down to the nitty-gritty stuff. Yeah, you, you know what you ought to do? You ought to make an online CE course on Dental Town. I mean, God, we put up 400 one-hour courses. They've been viewed a million times um, yeah. where you're, you're talking about, um, you know, um, um, marketing, patient retention, treatment plan acceptance rate. Um, you know, just real nuts and bolts because, like, say, this is uh, May 6th, and about another couple of weeks, another 6,000 dentists are going to graduate. They don't, they don't even know the vocabulary. They don't even know the language, and they got to master this stuff. And uh, sure. But, but uh, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Our pleasure. Thank you.